Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for attending my session. Um, introducing Meta Protocol Proxy, um, Unreal 7 Proxy Framework, powered by Envoy. My name is Hua Bing Zhao, and uh, I'm from Test.io. I work on Envoy, Envoy Gateway, and Istio. So first, I will give a little bit of background of why we need a so-called Meta Protocol Meta protocol uh, framework. Then I will introduce an uh, architecture of Meta protocol proxy and how it works, and then some use case. Finally, a demo. So when we talk about microservice, um, uh, most of the application, uh, microservice application, they are just using HTTP uh, for interface and communication, um, but for some Use case uh, as far as law. Uh, when I work in my previous company, they like for some internal application uh, for game for game application of some stream, streaming uh, service. They might have some opinionate um, protocol for inter-service communication because um, we know HTTP originally are designed for transfer data uh, like. Um, documents or resource on the web, a lot for RPC. So they may want to use some other protocol, uh, in some cases, like Swift, Double, or some internal proto protocol. Uh, and also we have messaging, cache, database, and the other layer seven protocol um, in our Microsoft application. So if a lot all of the sidecar edge proxy, um, but maybe most of them don't, don't understand this protocol. I mean, uh, after the layer seven, uh, they basically they treat them as plan TCP data. So if we put a proxy uh, in front of our application, what do we want, really want? Uh, basically, we want traffic management uh, on the layer seven. Uh, for example, load balancing at request level and load limiting at request level and also routing uh, uh, observability, uh, fault injection, or all of this functionality we want layer seven level. <coughs> and uh, what we really get is that uh, just the layer three, layer four uh, level traffic management, like routing based on IP address, TCP port, or SNI, and the cl clicking level observability, like uh, status based on TCP send, received bytes, open, closed uh, collection, something like that, and the security based on the collecting level authentication or authentication, uh, that's it. So uh, that's the reality, uh, but a lot of what we want. If we will look into the uh, different uh, layer seven protocols, uh, we can find that uh, Actually, the processing uh, of this uh, protocol in our proxy uh, looks quite similar. Uh, first, we want to extract some uh, k-value pair from the layer seven headers, uh, and then we do whatever we want, uh, uh, like processing on these headers, like routing, like observability, security, something like that. Um, for example, we have ATP 1.1, ATP 2, gRPC, TARS, DAB, and any other RPC protocols. Basically, the, uh, the service discovery, we use a, something called destination for service discovery. Uh, for ATP 1, 1.1, 1 .1, it's host, it's a host header. And for ATP 2, it's the authority, it's, it's a pseudo header. And for other protocols, we also have something similar in their header for Discovery. And for other processing, also we use some layer seven headers, the k power in the headers. So that's very, very similar. So do we really need uh, to uh, create a dedicated product, uh, proxy for every protocol? I don't think so. So in the world of layer seven protocols, managing traffic is usually done in a similar way. So Instead of building a dedicated 
uh, new filter for each protocol, we can just have a very common um, functions all gathered in a framework we call it uh, meta protocol proxy filter. Uh, that's that's what we uh, want to create. So it's a layer, uh, two layer filter architecture, uh, similar to the uh, ATP, ATP click manager in the own way. Um, so the meta pro protocol proxy is actually a layer four filter in the NOA layer four filter chain. Uh, so all the common functionality, including the load balancing, rate limiting, routing, both include the dynamic and uh, the uh, static uh, routing, uh, traffic monitor, monitor mirror, tracing, metric, logic, uh, login, etc. So all this functionality, they are similar. So actually, that's the same. So we built into the meta protocol proxy <coughs> in this framework. Um, if you have your own uh, protocol you want to support, you want to create layer seven uh, proxy for your own protocol, you just need to uh, uh, imp uh, implement the codec uh, interface, basically the decoder and the encoder. Decoder uh, can uh, extract a layer seven um, request from the TCP uh, clicking string and uh, get whatever header and then use for the data processing and the encoder, uh, encoding the, uh, the data and, the pro and send it to the upstream. So that's the basic idea of meta protocol uh, framework. <coughs> so there are two important st structures uh, in this uh, concept. Uh, uh, first one is metadata. Um, so uh, you can extract from a data package uh, using the decoder and uh, anything you think is, uh, will be useful for your data processing. Uh, you can just store them at k value pair in the metadata and you, they can be used by the layer seven filters uh, in the meta protocol proxy like for uh, routing match, for routing limiting match, et cetera. <coughs> So let's look into the, uh, and then the mutation uh, data structure. So uh, basically, you, if you want to uh, modify your request, uh, you put whatever you want to modif modify into the mutation data structure. Uh, the encoder will use that uh, 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 information to encode the, the request and send it to upstream. And then le let's look into the request path. So first, when the decoder uh, get the request from the downstream and uh, just uh, uh, extract header uh, of this request and populate the metadata uh, uh, data structure with any value. Like uh, if you have a user header, like you have a, a header for the environment, it's a test or production uh, uh, environment, you can use that in your header and store that information in the, in the metadata. And the other, uh, and the, all the filters, all the layer seven filters, like a router or maybe a custom filter or maybe a rate limiter, can get that information from metadata and use it to match against any configuration uh, uh, and then use that for uh, processing, layer seven processing, like for routing. And later, when the router choose a final data, Choose the, cho cho have chosen the final destination for this request, it can, the encoder can get all the mutation, uh, like you want to add a header, like tracing, uh, you, you want to specific tracing header value to 100%, uh, and then you can add it to the header, and the encoder will get that data from the mutation and, uh, and um, create the request and send, send to the upstream. So the res response path is similar, but just in uh, the uh, opposite direction. So that's how uh, meta product proxy uh, works. Uh, let's say you want to add a new protocol. Uh, what you need to do just to implement the codec interface. Uh, if you look at it there, uh, it's just three methods. The first one is decoded, uh, you get whatever, um, 
data from the uh, TCP collection buffer and uh, you populate uh, uh, the, the, the metadata with k value pair, you extract from the header. And for encode method, you just uh, um, use the metadata and mutation uh, data structure to construct the outgoing request. And if you have any error during, during the, the, the processing, like maybe the request had been not limited, you can uh, create an error and send it back to the uh, downstream. So that's it. So let's compare the work if you use or, or with or without uh, the meta protocol proxy. If you want to create, create our layer seven protocol uh, uh, proxy for yourself. Uh, before, I think the work is huge because you have to write a full-fledged layer 7 filter. Uh, just consider the effort uh, writing a ATP connection manager by yourself. Yeah, it's, a, it's huge. And after, uh, it's a manageable, very small work, like just write a code key implementation. Um, uh, I, I love someone did this like for a hundred of lines of code just uh, in one week by one, by one person, one developer, you can do that. So that's a comp comparison. <clears throat> um, right now, we already support uh, more than 10 uh, protocols, including the open source and private protocols. Um, for open source protocols like Double, Swift, BRPC, uh, because the open source that we already support in inside the Built in inside the metapro proxy, built in. And for some private protocols, um, uh, the, the user have their own uh, GitHub, um, private GitHub uh, uh, repository, uh, so we don't want to open source. Um, but overall, I think it's more than 10 protocols supported. And for the use cases, uh, I think the most significant use case is that it has been used in the 2022 uh, Olympic online streaming services. It's a private, private protocol uh, for streaming services. And we also have use case from Tencent Music, uh, Bostpin, and a lot of cloud, and some uh, more other cases can be found in, uh, in this issue. Uh, so finally, our demo. Um, so in this demo, we use meta protocol proxy as a, side, as a sidecar proxy, um, actually it's part of a project, a project I created uh, called, uh, called ArcMatch. Uh, so the meta protocol proxy is uh, on the data plane, serve as the pro uh, sidecar proxy. And uh, on the uh, control plan, we have STO, and we also have another component called Araki uh, to manage the a long HTTP protocol. So that's the architecture. Okay, let's say, go to the demo. So first, first we install our image and a uh, demo application. So just use meta protocol proxy as sidecar proxy. So if we look into the, the port, the part of the application, uh, you can see that uh, the ISTIL proxy actually, the image is a meta protocol proxy, so it can understand long HTTP protocols. <clears throat> and you can get layer seven, um, not a balancing, um, by install, just install the demo application without any configuration. So if we look into the SD standout of the application, you can see the request has been sent to 
uh, two different versions of the server, uh, version one or version two. So it means that the request already uh, been uh, load balanced uh, at the request level. Then you can get the X logs uh, in the standout of the MetaProcode proxy. So that's X log, uh, similar to the ATP, but a little, a little bit different because we uh, we have our opinionated uh, logo format. Uh, it's different. The first one you get the sh uh, the actual protocol is double. So then the status of request zero means success, and the Request and response uh, size and the time and the request ID, the destination service, uh, and the destination IP, etc. Yeah. So if you look into the configuration of the in way, you can get a sense how what, what's going on uh, under the hood. Basically, the TCP proxy, uh, default is a TCP proxy, but has been replaced by a meta protocol proxy. And you get all the calculation, like the X log, uh, the, the, the router, um, the tracing, uh, et cetera. And most importantly, it's the codec. So which, which uh, private protocol, which protocol, Specifically for this meta protocol proxy. So here, uh, this, the, the, this protocol called double. And you can ha also have swift here. You can also have your own private protocol here. <coughs> There's some some layer seven filter used uh, for getting the metrics and the RDS configuration. And the tracing, oh yeah, that's it. Okay, let then let's see how how we do routing, right? Um, if we look at this um, CRD, uh, it's similar to virtual service, but a little bit different because uh, it, uh, virtual service is specifically designed for ATP. So we have our own opinionated SRD we we'll call Meta Router. So it's, uh, it's uh, quite, sim quite simple. If you look at the SRD, it means that, okay, we send everything, every request to the demo service, uh, to the version one, version one of the demo service, that's it. So let's apply it. And then if you look into the Client side of the application, you can say all the requests instantly uh, have been have been routed to version one, so without any interruption uh, on the user side. <coughs> so it's a dynamic routing. Uh, the 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 routing rule has been sent out by the Iraq and Istio on the control plan uh, by uh, by uh, 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 XDS. Yeah. And then we we switch to version two, another rule. So that's the routing, and then traffic mirror. So we just send the request to the one version of the server um, on, on the client side, but we can get actually by tra uh, mirror the traffic to the another version. So you get this. It's very useful feature uh, if you want to get the traffic from like production environment and you want to fit it in into your maybe test environment. So that's it's a rule. You can see that the traffic will be sent to version one and be mirrored to version two. So if you look at the client side, all the client has been sent to version one. 
but we fully look into the server side, you can actually uh, say the request is coming uh, in both of the send out of the of the server side version container. <coughs> Okay, then global rate limiting. First, we uh, uh, configure the rate limiting server. So uh, if the method is say hello, we have a limitation like 10 requests per minute. And we apply the limit limiting rule. Okay, you get this result. Some of the requests have been rejected because it has been not limited. Of course, you can do a local learning to be with no quality limiting as well, yeah. So it can be quite flexible. You can have a, like, a rate limiting rule for the whole service, but you can also set um, some condition, uh, like set a rule for a subset of the services. Now you get some requests rejected because uh, they are over, lim over limited. <coughs> and then the tracing. You can get the tracing out of box without any modification because for this, per uh, uh, for this uh, protocol double, um, the double protocol actually uh, automatically pass down the header uh, in the Straight context, so you don't you don't have to modify any code. Uh, you can get a tracing uh, and all the uh, key value pair in the metadata uh, have been populated uh, into the tracing as a tags, so you get all all, all the information. <coughs> and the matrix. So you get all the metrics. Um, you can have a cluster level metrics. Uh, you can also have like STO compatible service level metrics. For example, you can have request total, this metrics and on um, the double services. Okay, I think that's all for my presentation. Any question? Cool. Okay. Thanks very much, Robin. Uh, no, wait. Sorry. Somebody was Do you have some um, uh, perf measurements, for example, like for Thrift or for any like uh, like the regular plain uh, fully implemented Im implemented proxy versus like the meta alternative? You mean performance compar comparison? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't have have one right now, um, but I I, I think uh, we have one not not specifically for uh, for um, Swift, but for our pro our protocol on our website by some of our users, yeah. So I, I think the the main difference that is the efficiency of the code key implementation. So if you can implement your code key very efficiently, you can get a like high throughout. Uh, otherwise, you have some problem. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Great, thank you.